The goal for Kin this year is to get it to the point where there's an SDK that any developer can easily integrate and have an experience up and running within five minutes for their users. Two, that that SDK runs on a very reliable, high-scale blockchain, a blockchain that just simply does not exist today. And then number three is to have more and more developers coming into that ecosystem and to get that flywheel going. Whereas more developers come in to help build the ecosystem, that brings in more consumers who are doing more transactions, who are creating more demand for the currency, who are creating a, a more valuable reward. So that's the real network effect that we're trying to get going is, you know, that's the beautiful thing about a cryptocurrency is like the more we all contribute to it, the more valuable it gets, the more valuable it gets, the more we all want to contribute to it. And so I think that's the goal for this year is to really get that flywheel going. You know, we have that SDK, it runs on this, that scalable blockchain, and we've inspired developers to take up that SDK and to get this digital sharing economy going across an increasing number of apps. And I think we, if we could do that this year, next year in 2018, um, I think that'd be, that'd be really exciting. Yes, we are in talks with lots of other companies. Um, it's early days. We don't have that really simple SDK for them yet. So we do talks, you know, we're sort of, hey, this is what we're working on. What do you think? Let's, let's sort of work on this together. And there's excitement around this. And I think that excitement comes from, you know, we live in a world dominated by monopolies. And, you know, even apps as big as Kick are struggling to compete and struggling to monetize. And that's true sort of across the 99% of other digital services and developers out there. And so if there's another way to compete and another way to monetize, another way to build value for the world, um, that gets people excited. For us, the physical world, using cryptocurrency in the physical world makes no sense. And when we first started you know, getting really interested in Bitcoin, um, we actually went to a conference in, in January 2012. And it was just like a handful of people. I think there was, you know, 12 people there plus me, so 13 people there. And, you know, one was the lead developer on, on Bitcoin and, like, like the who's who of cryptocurrency. And I was like, oh, I have to be there. I have to be there. You know, I think Bitcoin is, is a phenomenal innovation. I think it's going to revolutionize the world. But I think it's fundamentally flawed. And, you know, here we are and Bitcoin's passing a quarter trillion dollars. I still believe Bitcoin is fundamentally flawed. Um, we can talk about that <laughs> maybe another time. But in terms of what Bitcoin to me was, you know, if you wanted it to be a medium of exchange, if you wanted it to be something that people would actually use to facilitate the exchange of value between people, that Bitcoin would never achieve this. That was my view. That's, that was my view back in 2012. That, that's my view today. Why? The reason why is because to me, not to me, the reality is that today the entire physical world runs on dollars. Now you're Starbucks. You, you sell coffee for dollars and then you take that money and you, pay your, you buy your coffee beans in dollars, you pay your rent in dollars, and you pay your employees in dollars. And then your employees, you know, they receive their dollars and they go out and they buy their groceries in dollars. They pay, you know, for their taxis in dollars and they pay their rent in dollars and they buy their Starbucks in dollars. The whole world, the whole physical world runs on dollars. And that is as it should be. That's the reality. That's the way it should be. And so when you, when you talk to me about like, oh, but you know, what if we could buy our Starbucks in Bitcoin? It makes no sense to me. Like, so, okay, let me get this straight. I'm an employee. I get paid in dollars. I'm going to convert that to Bitcoin. I'm going to go to Starbucks. I'm going to buy a coffee in Bitcoin. They're going to immediately convert it back to dollars to pay me as their employee. Like, why don't we just stay in dollars? And that, that is the way the world has played out. You know, I think I read some stat that today there are less dollar-based transactions in Bitcoin today. Uh, than there were three, three or four years ago. 
know, people are realizing Bitcoin's great as a store of value, uh, but it is not a medium of exchange. And so this is what gets us excited about Can as you know, we've been thinking over the last, I don't know what, six years now, is to facilitate the exchange of value in the digital world. And uh, the world where you know all these consumers are coming to all these different services, providing value, but not getting compensated, that we could fix that. And then second, all these developers that are being beaten down by these monopolies, being co copied and crushed at every turn, have no possible business model because they don't have the data and scale to effectively monetize through advertising. Going to them and saying, hey, help us create this new world for consumers. And the degree to which you help us, you will get rewarded in kin. And by working together as consumers and developers, everybody working together, together, um, we could build this new world, this digital sharing economy. That could be amazing for humanity. Um, and so that's where we think the real opportunity is, is, you know, we think the physical world runs on dollars and that makes sense and that's the way it should be. Uh, but we think there's a real opportunity in the digital world.